if you look back at every year of like college football coaching changes, you will see grades given out to the hires of who was a slam dunk, who was a mid eh, hire, but we don't, we very rarely grade the firings. And so that's what we're going to do today on the daily huddle. We're going to grade the firings who should have gotten fired who got a raw deal in college football at this point, and there's still some coming. I think, like, literally as I pressed record on this, Rick Stock still at Middle Tennessee State got fired. So there are some changes still happening, but we're going to grade the firings today. I am fully am under the guise that we're going to embrace the grading of hirings later on down the line, and it's always fun to go back and look at those. I think a few years ago when you look at, I think it's 2018, that, you know, like there were a lot of slam dunk hires and there are not many of those dudes still left in their jobs. So uh, we're going to look at the firings, who deserved to get fired, who got a raw deal. And that's that's today's episode of the Daily Huddle. So we're going to start in the power five who deserved to get fired, who didn't deserve to get fired. The openings right now. Well, I guess not the openings, the Firings that happened, Northwestern, Michigan State, Texas A&M, Mississippi State, Indiana, Houston, and Syracuse. Northwestern and Michigan State are kind of in their own separate little boat that they started early in the season or in Northwestern's case before the season where you got Pat Fitzgerald and Mel Tucker got fired for improprieties. Those are kind of difficult to judge, but I gave Northwestern a B plus because um, – you know, there are there's supposedly information out there that evidence that Pat Fitzgerald had no idea that the hazing allegations that were happening inside his program were actually going on. And then other guys were like, this is the exact same things that happened when Pat Fitzgerald was coaching as an assistant in playing at Northwestern. He absolutely knew it was still going on. So there's conflicting reports there. So I give it a B plus. You, you can't let that stuff happen in any form these days. You can't allow, you just can't let hazing be a part of your program. Um, and even if you didn't know about it, it's your job to know about it. And that's a rough go of it for Pat Fitzgerald, but a B plus. Michigan State, A minus. Mel Tucker got fired for sexual impropriety against uh, a sexual assault survivor who had um, been hired to educate Mel Tucker's players on how to treat women respectfully. There is conflicting evidence about whether she set Mel Tucker up. We're just going to skip it. If you have to err on the side of employing and paying millions of dollars to a potential sexual predator or not, I think you side on the, you err on the side of not employing that guy. So a minus. Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher got fired. I'm giving it a B, the firing a B. I don't believe that Jimbo Fisher was going to lead Texas A&M to the promised land. I don't know who has the ability to lead Texas A&M to the promised land. I don't know who that is. I don't know if Mike Elko, who got who got hired, introduced today i don't know if he's the guy that's gonna turn a m into the juggernaut the sleeping giant that everybody says that it is D generally my thought when you call someone a sleeping giant is there's a reason they've been sleeping but jimbo fisher wasn't going to be the guy to lead them to where they wanted to go so i give the firing a b like is it the right decision probably there are those that would argue it should have been done two years ago i don't know that that's the case but I also don't know that you're going to, if you left him through the rest of this season and said, you need to make the college football playoff in 2024, no ifs, ands, or buts. I don't know that he accomplishes that. So it's one of those things that I've mentioned this before, that I think if you know you have to do something eventually, you have to do it immediately. So in this case, there are some extenuating circumstances in the financial categories that make that a little bit more difficult than you might want it to be, but I give the firing a B. At Mississippi State, Zach Arnett got fired after less than a season as the head coach, and I gave it a C- minus because I don't 
I don't think it was a great marriage to begin with, but I don't think Mississippi State was in a great situation from the get-go. When Mike Leach dies between the last game of the regular season and the bowl game, it's uh, it, it's a, one, it's a sad thing for the entire sport, but then two, you don't get the like real great opportunity. Like it's it's pretty classless. It's tacky to go through a nationwide search at that point. So they hired somebody that was already got staff. It appears as if he Zach Arnett wasn't prepared to be the head coach at Mississippi State. I guess he was, but he decided, hey, I'm gonna change the way we do things here, and that didn't work out. And he got fired. Again, I don't know that. I don't know that there's a great like. There's, there's not an A plus for Mississippi State to be found here. You were in a bad situation, and you did what you could to make a bad situation an okay situation as quickly as you could. But less than a year is rough. The guy got the bowl game last year into like what week nine this year. That's not a great sample size of getting an opportunity to prove yourself, especially when, you know, he didn't want to run the air raid offense that Mike Leach had operated before that. You need time to change things up to get them things rolling the way you want them. I think that is a tough, that's a tough thing to, it's a tough spot to be in, but less than one year stinks. Indiana's firing. I give an A minus Tom Allen was 33 and 48 in seven seasons. And, I think a lot of those 33 come when Michael Penix Jr. is your quarterback. Um, you know, they had a nice run in 2020 where they were really good. But Indiana is a more difficult job than I think people give it credit for. But I don't know how great of a... I, I, I believe, and I've mentioned this before, there are just some schools that you have to do things differently at, that there are some schools that should embrace running the triple option or before it was like the air raid used to be kind of the passing version of the triple option where you're just doing something completely different than everybody else is. And then like the smart people were like, wait, what if we did this with the best athletes in America and things started to, to trickle aside. But at Indiana is one of those schools that I think every conference has one school that you just, you don't have the resources. You don't have the recruiting base. You don't have the way to outspend your conference opponents, you got to do something different. And I think Indiana and to a lesser extent, kind of Purdue Northwestern and the big 10 are those schools. If I'm Indiana, I want to hire Troy Calhoun or Jeff Munkin or somebody similar to that. That's going to come in and do something completely different off the wall. That is going to bother other big 10 coaches because they're not going to want to play us throughout the season. but I use a tough job. Tom Allen did the best he could. It's 33 and 48 and seven seasons. Like you got your chance after seven seasons. So you got enough runway there to establish the program and the culture and all those other buzzwords that you want to use. You had that opportunity. You didn't get it done. That's okay. You can go be a defensive coordinator somewhere or a linebackers coach and do a great job. But 500, less than 500, 15 games under 500, isn't going to cut it at many schools over the course of seven seasons. I don't think the expectations should be all that high at Indiana, but they should be slightly higher than that. Like I think going six and six and make it a bowl game should be like the minimum. And you could be five and seven here and there, as long as you are, you know, seven and five, eight and four here and there as well. But I think it's, I think it's an appropriate high or appropriate firing. Dana Holgerson got fired at Houston 31 and 28 during his tenure. And I give this a C plus just because, and I, I, I will, I will reserve the right to come back and amend this later because if Houston strikes quickly, that there was a report that like Gary Patterson is 100% in play at Houston if Gary Patterson is the hire and he's hired by the end of the week, I reserve the right to turn this from a C plus into like a B plus or an A minus. 
because if you operate with intent in your firing that the only like a few years ago when Texas, the only way they were going to fire Tom Harbin was if they were going to hire Steve Sarkeesian. I have no problem with that. If you if you operate with a plan like Texas A&M, I gave a beat. Jimbo Fisher probably deserved to be fired, but it certainly appeared as if they did not have a plan other than like, hey, we're Texas A&M. People are going to come out of the woodwork for this job. And they didn't. Shocker. And so you hire Mike Elko, who's a former assistant there. If Houston hires Gary Patterson by Thursday, I will say that this is not a C-plus firing. It's a B-plus firing or A-minus firing. If you operate with intent of guys that have winning records or have the ability to, I think, still coach them up and be, I think Houston could still be a pretty good program in the Big 12 under Dana Holgerson, but Gary Patterson will probably do a better job there. So if that's what they do, I'm going to come back and change that from a C plus to a B plus or an A minus. I reserve that right. But on the surface, I think it's like, a uh, could one more year have helped? Yeah. And I think one more year could have put them in the same spot where in 2025 or 2026, they're like, oh, hell, we should have fired him in 2023. So I don't I don't mind the striking while the iron's hot. But I think if that goes a quick coaching search where they definitely targeted one guy and they fired Dana Holgerson with the idea that we are going to hire Gary Patterson or Jeff trailer or Tom Herman, then okay. I don't have a problem with it. And the last power five opening is Syracuse. Dino Babers 41 and 55 in his tenure, similar to Indiana where I, you know, you're basically a basketball school. Um, You're in a tough recruiting base. I think they were patient, especially, you know, he had a 10 win season a couple of years ago, but um, I I don't think they were trending in the right direction. And so at that point, you're 41 and 55, you're 14 games under 500 after I think eight seasons. Like, yeah, that's, that's where you are. And that's, that has to just, that has to earn you a, a firing. The expectations shouldn't be grandiose at Syracuse, but again, making a bowl game every year, should be kind of the bare minimum. And if you don't hit that, well, there's the door. So that's grading the Power 5 firing so far. I don't know how many more of those will trickle out here within the course of the next couple of days just because signing day is going to happen. But then also, like, you're kind of at the mercy of hoping, praying, wishing that, you know, maybe your guy doesn't get snatched up by somebody else because that's what I think some of this, like, I think – Houston fires Dana Holgerson with the idea that there are a lot of people that thought Jeff Trailer was going to leave UTSA for Texas A&M. I don't know how real those possibilities were, but once he leaves Texas, once he doesn't get the Texas A&M job, you have to then be like, whoa, whoa hey, 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 wait a second. We think that guy is really good and we want him to be our coach. Okay, sorry, Dana, you got to go. I think those situations happen and arise. In the group of fives, uh, Middle Tennessee State fired Rick Stockstill. I, I, I get it. Truthfully, um, he just finished up his 18th season leading the program. He's 65 years old. He was making less than a million bucks. Uh, 118 and 11, 111, 113 and 111 uh, over the course of 18 seasons. They won four bowl games, had, I think, 10 winning records in 18 seasons. So it was good, but, you know, it's probably time for, for a change. And that's understandable. Like, I get it. You know, it just 18 years is a really long time for anybody at any program. But I think a change probably is needed. Um, and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him become a position coach somewhere, um, like a, be a quarterback's coach uh, at a power five, or like a lower power five school. Kind of just chill out, ride out the remaining years of his football coaching tenure. Boise State is kind of the big one here in the Power Five. Andy Avalos got fired uh, after less than three years, which I find super interesting. He's 22 and 14 in less than three years, which obviously isn't up to their standard, but he's you know one of their guys. He's a Boise State guy. Um, and it's interesting that, you know, and this is, I think, similar to Houston, except it's played out a little longer than I thought it would, that Boise State – if you fire Andy Avalos with the idea that you're either going to hire Brian Harson or Kellen Moore, 
then that C plus goes to a A minus. But it's taken a while, and that job's still open. So I don't know where they sit with potentially hiring hiring Brian Harson or whether they, you know, are going to try to hire Kellen Moore, the Chargers offensive coordinator who played at Boise State. I think lost three games by like a combined six points in college, and they had like five missed field goals in those three losses. But if you are if you're dumping a guy who's 22 and 14 for an NFL offensive coordinator or a guy who had a lot of success previously coaching that program before he left for an SEC school. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but right now it's a C plus like you hire, you fired a guy that was one of your own less than three years in when he had a winning record. Now again, 22 and 14 is not up to Boise state standards, but I think the, the job that Chris Peterson did there and then got followed up by Brian Harson. I think blinds people to the fact that it's a little tougher than I think the average fan thinks it is to win at Boise State. Kind of got to ride those JUCO recruiting trails a little bit. Um, I don't think the NIL is all that great there. Facilities aren't spectacular at Boise State, and you are recruiting against some Pac-12 schools, some Big 12 schools. It's a little diff- more difficult than people think it is up there at Boise. And then the final three group of fives, I think all have – something in common that of the uh, 10 most difficult group of five jobs that are out there, I think these three are probably solidly on the list. New Mexico is one of the toughest jobs in America. Danny Gonzalez was 11 and 32 in four years. Like, yeah, you're going to get a B plus in that firing. 11 and 32 is 11 and 32 over four years. Like that's, it just is what it is. Um, despite how hard it is, 11 and 32 stinks. It's a that's a rough record. Dana DeMel, six years at UTEP, 20 and 49. Sorry, <laughs> you're gonna get a B plus. Like it, it, it makes a lot of sense to give somebody six years and they get you 20 wins in six years. Like okay, you're not the you're not the right guy for us. You gave them their opportunity and it's time to change and that's okay. Terry Bowden, I think. At Louisiana Monroe, I gave him a C plus on the firing. He's ten and twenty six in three years. UL Monroe like completely gets outspent by their competitors in the Sun Belt, like completely outspent. I think it's the lowest budget in America from a football spending perspective. And he's ten and twenty six in three years. I think he's got enough name cachet and enough guys that would want to coach underneath him that you could get that thing rolling in the right direction, but didn't necessarily get the greatest opportunity of all time to get rolling. Um, So I I give it a C minus. I would have liked to see Terry Bowden get one or two more years at Louisiana Monroe before they come in and say, Hey, you know what? You're not the guy for us. But again, of the probably 10 toughest G five jobs in America, I think New Mexico, UTEP and UL Monroe are on it. So to say that like anybody could just show up there, like no matter who the hot up and coming coach is, no matter how great of a coach you are, like I don't know, like if Nick Saban went to New Mexico, I think it'd still be a hot minute before they were really good. And I think that's just part of the situation that you you get in that that job. So I don't think it's out like I wouldn't be surprised if in twenty oh, I don't know. 2027, 2028 coaching cycles, you see New Mexico, UTEP, UL Monroe open up again because somebody went nine and 27 in their three seasons there or whatever. And the school's like, oh, you know what? This isn't a great fit for us. I think that's kind of a revolving door. And that's where you sit. But those are the grades for the firings so far. We always grade the hires, but never grade the fires. So I wanted to grade the fires. There's some A's. Some C's. I didn't give anybody a D or an F. Like you probably could have argued that, like, um, you probably could have argued that Houston. And and again, I think it all hinges on who they hire, which isn't like that. Kind of goes. It's the antithesis of the whole point of creating the fires. But like, could Boise State have been an F? Yeah, it could come back and be an F if they hire somebody you've never heard of that drives that program even deeper into the ground, it could be an F and hell, we might revisit these at some point, but I think right now, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a C plus, but no F's, no D's. 
I think you can see a lot of reasoning behind every firing so far. There's not any just like flat out head scratchers, at least to me. But that's just the way I see it. Want to know what you think? Hit us up in the comments here. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out here at Saturday Glory. If you are listening to the podcast, drop a five star review. It goes a long way in helping us get in front of more college football fans. That'll do it for this episode of the Daily Huddle. We're back at it tomorrow as the coaching carousel continues to turn here on the Daily Huddle on Saturday Glory.